Another great find brought to you by Tony DeCosta of Liquor City Claremont and offering you the chance to learn more about wine, the masters behind them, and even which wines to collect. Travel 80 kilometers east of Cape Town over Solari's Pass and you'll find one of the most beautiful valleys in the world. Verdant, vibrant, the Elgin Valley is known for its top quality, cool climate grapes and wines, as well as being somewhat of an outdoor adventure capital of South Africa. Uh, today we head to one of my favorite boutique wine farms in Elgin to celebrate Pinot Noir Day 2021 with a winemaker who has certainly tamed this heartbreak grape and an owner uh, of inimitable charm. Uh, Sean Skibber and Sandy King of South Hill Vineyards. A very warm welcome to you both. Thank you, Guy. Thank, Thank you, Guy. You. Lovely to be here. Sandy, I believe that the uh, pandemic has been a significant challenge to the business, hasn't it? Yes, it's been a quite a quite a time to say the least. Um, obviously, the most distressing on my side has been um, on the on the hosting of weddings. I think we had nineteen weddings affected, um, and unfortunately, those those weddings that were postponed by a year then got hit by the, the second wave, so have had to be pushed out again. So we've a lot of juggling, um, but we are determined to get all our, our couples down the aisle and um, hopefully in the, in the forthcoming um, months that's gonna be able to take, take place. I, um, I must say, I realized how hard the Valley had been hit when we visited a couple of months ago and we went off to one of your favorite eateries for dinner, uh, Royal, and found that it was closed. Done. Yeah. yeah no more. Yeah. Have they closed that shop permanently? Yes, they have. Yeah, they have. So I think, you know, besides the wedding, you know, as you know, the, the setup with, with us at South Hill, it, it lends itself to being a really congenial meeting place for families and groups of friends so just not you know we've got a lot of re repeat guests that come back you know for a special anniversary or birthday and and just not having those groups of people and those connections of people and not for us so much with them but for the people in general with the, you know having the mm. connection with each other it's, it's it's yeah it's, it's a be it is a heartbreaking time or has been yeah I know we can only hope and pray that things will get a little bit better. Uh, we've yeah. got at least something to celebrate this week, uh, that being Pinot Noir Day. Uh, so, Sean, I think let's let's talk a little bit more about about your wine. Um, and for those that are not quite familiar with what exactly constitutes the Elgin Wine Valley, uh, would you mind kind yeah. of defining the area for us and then sharing the unique for topography sure. you enjoy? Yeah. Well, the, the irony is that an Elgin lies, just as you mentioned, 80 kilometers from Cape Town, and yet so many Cape Tonians are largely unaware of, of what the valley has to offer and, and where it is. So if you've ever traveled from Cape Town along the N2 to Hermanus or Caledon, then you have driven right through the center of the Elgin Valley. Um, from the moment you crest uh, Solaris Pass until uh, you dip down into Hohook, um, that, that stretch um, is, is Elgin. Um, it's a, a mountainous plateau. Uh, we are ringed by or encircled by a mountain range uh, and it's roughly 15 kilometers in diameter. And of course you've yeah. uh, also got influence of, of the ocean. Tell us a little bit about that, yeah. that, that mist well, that comes over. Yeah, we've, we're very fortunate that, I mean, the topography in Elgin is extremely varied. It's very hilly. Um, anyone who's ventured off the N2 will realize just how spectacularly beautiful it is. I don't think uh, the view from N2 really kind of does it justice. So it really is worth turning off. But together with that, the altitude, we are sort of, to give you an idea, between 250 and 450 meters above sea level, most of the vineyards here. But we are also within about 12 kilometers of the sea. So we have the dual benefits of altitude and proximity to the ocean, which both of those factors uh, contribute to bringing down our average temperatures. 
which makes a huge difference to the quality and style of wines that we make here. And that, that bringing down of temperature obviously defines you as a cool climate growing area, which yeah. I would like you just to kind of share with, for, for those viewers who are learning more about wine and grapes, uh, would you mind kind of sharing with us some of the grape varieties best suited to cool climates? We know Pinot Noir is yeah. obviously one of them. So, so the coolness basically um, lengthens your ripening period. Of, of the vineyard. So it slows down the ripening period. Um, we, we live in a sunny, warm country. So when we're talking cool, everything's relative. It's not quite like cool in Europe. Um, but that's, that elongated ripening period really benefits most varieties um, because it slows down that, um, the time in which the, the vine can develop fruit flavors in, in in the wines rather than just a rush to you know high sugar levels which is what you need to to make the the alcohol in the wine um you know certain varieties uh, like syrah or shiraz um are chameleons i mean they they make they they're quite adaptable you can make a fantastic shiraz or syrah in a warm area you can also make a completely different style but equally excellent uh, shiraz in cool areas but there are some um, varieties, and we're talking about Pinot in particular, uh, that really require um, the, the climate to be cool. Um, Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay both respond really positively to cooler climates, but Pinot is definitely the most pedantic when it comes to climate. It does not respond well to, to warmer areas, which means that there are very few really well-suited uh, sites in South Africa for making truly premium quality Pinot Noir. Like yours, which I can't wait to taste <laughs> in a short while from now. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Well, I, I might be biased, but, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we... uh, how, just out of interest, how did you find yourself uh, making wine in such a, a beautiful valley? Well, it was, it was really, you know, so much in, in life is, is chance. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I went to Elsenburg after studying at UCT for years and years and working in a restaurant and thinking that I wanted to be in business. Realized that wine was far more interesting. Um, went back to Elsenburg and in my final year, um, I was just about to write final exams. I heard that uh, the owners of South Hill were looking for someone to take over the running of the farm. They'd, they'd, um, they'd planted most of the vineyards at that stage um, and um, they were using consultants but they felt that the business had developed to a point where they now needed someone um, full-time um, on the ground managing the vineyards and um, making making wine for them and that was June 2005 and we launched the first vintage in 2006. Sandy is it and this might be a bit of a, a, a dodgy question to ask you but is it um preferable to 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 hire a a younger winemaker who doesn't come with a century of of experience because is it is it easier to work with someone like that than than with somebody that's you know been around and done all the different farms I mean, what what drew you to sean what what was it about him that I think for 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 both of, for both parties, as Sean was saying, that it was the farm was in an, in its infancy. Mm. Um, it certainly has been great for both the farm and the brand to grow together with Sean as he's developed as a winemaker, um, and that certainly um, has been the and is the appeal for us. Yeah, and he's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I would imagine it is. It's it's because you both, as you say, we're both growing together, and 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 Sean, it must be very rewarding for you to see, you know, tests that you've done or experiments that you've done yeah. coming to fruition, yeah. and, and being being there. Yeah, I mean, it's it it's um, it often amazes me how much um, moving around happens in the wine industry. Um, and, and look, I mean, from a career point of view, I, I, I do understand why you guys do it, but if you really truly want to understand um, the terroir, the site and the, and the farm, mm. there's just, is no substitute for, for time. I mean, because you get, you get one chance to experiment 
um, per year. If you if you compare that with being a chef, you can tweak things, you can change things on a daily basis. I I get to tweak once a year, really. And then you've got the weather that that's also throwing throwing curveballs at you and keeping things interesting. So I mean, it, it's a really it's it's it takes a lifetime and and many lifetimes. I mean, if you look at uh, Europe, I mean. They, they've been doing it for hundreds and hundreds of years, figuring out which sites, which areas, which varieties respond best. And that's not something that, that even one generation can, can mm. figure out. It takes hundreds of years. So, I mean, 16 years that I've spent here is just a, a battle of the island, really. And then climate change comes along and changes everything. And then France don't know what they're doing. And the UK suddenly come to the fore and think, yeah. oh, la, la, la. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. you, you mentioned uh, chefs there. I believe you've got a bit of a passion for food. Uh, your favorite aroma is mushrooms frying in butter, I believe. Uh, is that with or without garlic? Definitely garlic, Guy. <laughs> yes. There are very well, few think... things I cook without garlic. You and I are on the same page there. And, and does your passion for food influence your winemaking in any particular way? Are you making wine to go with food or is that not really coming? Yeah, out? I think the two go so so closely um, together. I mean, they, they match each other so well. Um, I, I love the experimental nature of both, you know, and it's, uh, I don't take either too seriously. I mean, you need to, you need to have a bit of fun with it. And um, it's a never ending quest to find that holy grail of the perfect combination, which I've yet, yet to find on both both counts. I mean, it's just, um, it's really, we just, all we can hope for is to stumble across some sort of tasty treats along the way. Definitely. I want to get onto the part of Via the Grapevine that's, uh, for me, always the best part, and that's the tasting. And uh, let's turn that for the camera to see. Where's, where's it? Oh, it's up the top here. There we go. 2018 Pinot Noir, the South Hill Pinot Noir. And uh, you know, tasting notes or tasting notes, but uh, maybe let's start with a winemaker's uh, review uh, of the Pinot Noir grape as a whole. And, and why is it known as the heartbreak grape? Well, I think uh, we, we touched on just how pedantic or unforgiving it is when it comes to climate and sight. And I think that is for for many, I think that is why it is. It has that reputation for being just so difficult and hard to break grape. I mean, I, I have to say, however, that I mean, for me, um, I really, truly believe that that the wines are made in the vineyard, um, and and to that end, I'm extremely lucky that I am involved in the farming side as well of the business because that really is the hard graft, in my opinion, needs to be done there um, to to limit what you need to do in the cellar. You know, I don't want to, you, you don't want to be in a situation where you're having to tidy up and fix mistakes that were made in the vineyard in the cellar, especially with a great black Pinot Noir that is so incredibly unforgiving. Having said that though, I, I have to admit that, I mean, my, my one block of Pinot that I have um, is really not a problem child at all. It, it is so happy, it thrives. We get fantastic quality uh, fruit. Um, it's, it's really, it's maybe I've, I've just been, been fortunate that I haven't had to deal with problem, you know, but it's, um, it's a joy. And the one thing that you do have to bear in mind is that it does require a bit of a soft touch. So mm. we spoke about cooking, you know, whereas if you're making something like Cabernet, that's more like, a, you know, making a poiki, a stew, where you can kind of mix, mix and match and throw in a bit of this, throw in a bit of that, you know, it's a, you wing it along the way. Whereas Pinot, to me, is far more like baking. It's, uh, it's, it requires precision. Um, and, and it doesn't have, it doesn't have that heavy character to mask um, any um, problems that, that might have picked up in the, in the cellar. So it is, it is extremely unforgiving. And, uh, but if you treat it gently and you guide it through, um, through the process without being too rough, it, it's an incredibly rewarding variety. This is an incredibly interesting color as well. I don't know if you're able yeah. to see it. Yeah. it. It feels, am I right in saying that this is a little bit 
lighter than a in color than a yes. than a so called traditional yeah. Pinot Noir. Look, we, we touched on, on vintage variation, whether 2018 was definitely a more delicate uh, vintage than I normally have at South yeah. Hill. Um, the, it, it was far, yeah, a far more delicate, uh, uh, but no less beautiful wine, I think. Um, and that's, so that's a trick with, you know, uh, light, light doesn't need to be simple. So, no. I mean, we do generally, Elgin Pinots, I, I find, tend to have a brighter, redder, um, slightly more depth to color than, than um, pinots from further south, from, from Himlanada, that tend to be more um, Burgundian in character, perhaps a little bit lighter in color, but also, I mean, no less beautiful, just stylistically a little different to, to Elgin. I do think that the 2018 was, was a bit more like that, that sort of that lighter uh, style that, that uh, Himlanada usually um, Produce. I think, I think what will be really interesting for uh, for anybody tasting this is that the yes, there's a lightness to, in color, but certainly on the nose, there's there's the depth of aromas there. I mean, beautiful earthy notes coming through, yeah, um, and and it 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 pulls you in. It it says I'm. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big wine. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not, yeah. it's not rosé in nature, if, if, if I can say that. Um, yeah. I haven't even tasted it yet. I'm still nosing it. Well, Am I the only one the... nosing and sipping this morning? I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the two of you. And I don't see any other glasses. <laughs> Sandy, I'm, I'm you're letting me I'm surrounded by bottles, but they're all closed. <laughs> <laughs> they... But I, 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 I did actually open a bottle last night, Guy, um, to prepare myself for today, and the, and the memory is still alive. I mean, I have to say, I mean, wines, um, wines never cease to amaze me how they evolve, and it's been, a, a, it's been quite a while since I've actually um, had some of the 2018 pillar. So it was really, it was fascinating for me to appreciate just how it's developed, and I think that's one thing that Pinot requires far more so than a lot of other varieties is it does, it really does need time. Um, mm. You know, it's, it's such a tragedy that so many um, premium Pinot Noirs that you buy locally are sold in their infancy. And unfortunately, most of those wines are no doubt drunk in their infancy where they, they really are incredibly simple um, wines that have not had the chance to develop their secondary and tertiary kind of characteristics and really shown their, their true potential. And I think this wine, since I've last tasted it in the six months, has really developed so beautifully. I mean, there's behind that, that um, um, sort of truffle, um, earthy kind of character that you spoke of, I get a, a, I still get a pure kind of cherry fruit kind of dimension. And I think, you know, that that's a challenge in, yes, and spicy, definitely. I mean, the challenge with communicating um, Pinot to, to consumers, especially people who are new to wine, is that you can have that, that um, lightness with no less complexity. I mean, the wine still has power. The most mm. beautiful description I heard of Pinot was once that it's a, an iron fist in a velvet glove. It's, it's got that, it should be beautifully rounded. It should be, you know, well-balanced, none of the kind of, none of the factors should be jarring. There shouldn't be too much wood or too much acid, too much tannin. They're all just, they're seamless and, and there's this, and an enormous amount of complexity and flavor. And, and those aromatics, I think at the moment, are just showing so well. And I love how the depth of aroma follows through on the yeah. palate. Um, yeah. And it, it, it makes you think this wine as well. You, yeah. You're analyzing constantly. Uh, what is that? What, where, where did it go to now? So it's evolving. Not only is it evolving in the glass, but it evolves in your in your mouth as well, which is fascinating. Yeah. And that, that's do you magic. Have some, you know? Do you have a do you have a, a kind of a strategy? And 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 this can be your, for you to answer or for Sandy. Do you have a strategy in place to release wine uh, a little bit later? And is this? I mean, this isn't a new release, correct? Twenty eighteen. This not was released. This was released about a year ago. Yeah, just under a year ago. So, so do you hold your wine back for two, two wine, two years? Well, 
thereabouts? Yeah, ideally, and we'd like to get into a, in, into a cycle where obviously this wine spends 12 months in oak barrels, but older wood. So, you, you mm -hmm. know, Pinot doesn't uh, require a heavy handed oaking regime. So, but it does need some, some of that, that French oak just to sort of back it up and, and support it. So 12 months in barrel after harvest, and then ideally at least another sort of 12 months um, after bottling, just to let the wine settle. But uh, yeah, look, I mean, it's, um, it, and, um, it, yes. I imagine that strategy has probably changed thanks to COVID because now it's about getting the stock out there and selling the wine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's where the reality comes in. And that's why I do think that some of the, so there are so many of these super premium pinos that are being sold in their youth is, is actually a really healthy sign for the industry because it means, you know, they're needing to get those wines onto the market and they are mm. selling, which is, I suppose, positive. And, and unfortunately, what, well, what it does mean is if you are a wine enthusiast, you just have to buy them in their youth and, and sell them yourself. The old classic, buy 12 bottles and open one a year. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> what changes? A question for, for both of you. Is there one thing, one thing, that you wish the world knew about South Hill Pinot Noir? Well, well, for me, I, I kind of touched on it already. I, I really think that it's an important message that people need to understand that just because the wine is light in color and ostensibly um, a lighter wine, it doesn't mean that it is a simple or easy or uncomplicated or complex wine. Okay. And, then, and Sandy? And from my side, I think, um, you know, also touching on what Sean said, just the, the versatility of the wine really lends itself to being a great food buddy. Um, it really pairs very well with food. I, I would pair this with garlic mushrooms on ciabatta. <laughs> but... <laughs> Have you got a better food pairing that you that you would suggest or mine, recommend? Yeah. <laughs> um, Sandy, you want to well, go first? Or? Yeah. Well, from from my side, I think just on that versatility, um, it's great with um, pasta dishes or pizza. It pairs really well with seafood or mm. a more sort of hearty meat or chicken or vegetarian dish. Um, and it even pairs really well with desserts, um, a creme brulee and specifically with chocolate. So oh, wow. divine chocolate mousse or chocolate brownie, it's going to do well. Sure, that's interesting. Okay, we'll give that a try. Yeah. Um, Sean, do you want to, while we... Here, would you like to give us a, a little bit of an insight into the other wines available in the South Hill portfolio? Sure. Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, Pinot has had its, it had its moment now, but I mean, half of the farm is planted to Sauvignon Blanc. And uh, being a, a cool area, Sauvignons from Elgin really respond beautifully. You get a beautifully tropical kind of character in the grape rather than these sort of, uh, I think, Savino seems to have come in for a bit of a, a, a tough time recently among some consumers who associate it with being very acidic, thin, green kind of wines. And, mm. and that may be true for Savino grown in hot areas where you're forced to, to harvest too early, but certainly not for um, Elgin Savino's where you can expect a lot more tropicality, uh, sort of granadilla, um, black currant, even some, sometimes beautifully full, uh, full bodied. Um, um, but still crisp, delicious uh, Sauvignon Blancs. Um, I also um, have some Cabernet on the farm, which I would not probably have planted had I had the decision in 2002 when it went in, but it's proven everyone, including myself, wrong. It's, it's just responded so well. Um, it's on a slightly warmer site on the farm. Um, I mean, that we touched on the rolling kind of topography of Elgin, which really does mean that, that you get lots of little um, microclimates within mm. the valley and on the north the more northerly facing slopes that are on slightly heavier swirls you know we've proven that cab can make a beautiful elegant cool climate cab i also have a dry rosé that i make from uh, shiraz which does really well and uh, and then also a, a rhone style uh, syrah which is has got that lovely white pepper spicy kind of character 
completely different style to a you know a, a warm area Shiraz, but uh, but a delicious um, wine in its own right. We we spoke about topography at the beginning of the interview, and it was topography of the valley. But I think just the topography of South Hill alone mm. lends itself mm. to such versatility because you do have so yeah. many different angled slopes all facing in different directions. Um, and that yeah. must offer you, yeah, a lot of joy in terms and soil of... Types. Yeah. And soil uh, and, and soil types, how many different ones do you have on the farm out of interest? Look, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a gradation from um, quite sort of sandy... Um, low potential soils that um, thankfully have a, a, a substrate of a thick clay layer underneath, which which sort of preserves soil moisture to some extent on the one side of the farm. And it ranges all the way up to sort of uh, Bockefeld shale and, and quite heavy sort of high potential sort of heavy clay um, soils that help retain moisture. So everything everything from those two extremes, which just makes for makes for the for more interest in, in the vineyard and and again that's also um is why it takes years and years to really kind of um understand not just each vineyard but within the vineyards you know what parts uh need what what special attention i hope sandy is playing her music to the vines still <laughs> to keep them inspired don't, hey? don't let away secrets guy what happens on tour <laughs> I, I must say we my wife and I still talk about the fantastic memorable weekend that we uh, we shared in in the pump house cottage a few years ago and it's sad how quickly time flies because you know in your memory it it sits there like it was last year and then you you look at the calendar and it holy it was that that yeah. long ago um so yeah. at, I mean, I can vouch. I, I still need to come back in summertime so we can swim in the dam and 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 use the yeah. the jacuzzi because it was a bit trollos for that. But I can vouch for the accommodation. Yeah. Um, and and <laughs> and delicious cappuccinos from your restaurant. Um, truth coffee that's delivered. I mean, I think you've got a barista there on yeah. on site who who just make and he's got. Oh, that's the other thing. He he delivers the most beautiful artwork on the yeah. top of the foam. That's something you've got to go to South Hill for if yeah. you don't go for the wine, which is weird. <laughs> um, and then of course there's uh, your husband's epic sound system in that restaurant <laughs> tasting area, which yes. we don't talk about, hey, because what goes on tour stays on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind sharing with us though? Because I believe, when was it? A year or two ago, you added oh, a third accommodation offer offering you've got a you've got the pump house cottage and then the manor house and then a houseboat tell us more yeah, yeah. yes guy that's right um and and certainly to to everybody out there i can vouch for guys dance moves um we we, we did have a very fun spontaneous <laughs> evening <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, Guy, the, the pump house that you stay, that uh, you and your wife stayed in has um, one of the things I think for a lot of us during lockdown underwent a, a little revamp. So it's had a little uh, lick of paint and a, and, a, and a freshening up. So it's looking really lovely at the moment, even if I say so myself. We've got our six bedroomed um, self-catering guest house villa which really lends itself to bigger parties and groups of families and friends. And then our new addition is um, an old Langebaan uh, houseboat, which was dismantled and we've rebuilt and put it, put it back on the water. And it really is spectacular. You are, you, you're sleeping on water, you, you know, you're on water. Um, it is moored up to one of the, side of the of the the biggest dam on the on the farm so um you you know you've got that the duality of being on board but being able to bry and and care as it were on the on the side of the of the dam um and just very unique um you know very exciting um and and lovely lovely place to stay and do you still have that amazing maze 
Outside we have the, <laughs> we still have our amazing maze, which um, uh, Sean was very um, generous in that he gave us a, um, a, a walkway into the, the Cabernet Sauvignon vineyard. So it lies alongside our restaurant area. Um, and in summer, in the, uh, you know, when we've got, when you've got the cover of the vines um, alongside, A, it's a fun, you know, lovely thing to do is just to have a little meander into the maze. Mm. But um, we've now got restaurant tables that fall inside of it. Um, so that's, yeah, a, 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 you know, a unique dining experience, um, I, if I can say that, yeah. Very so, much so. And as you, yeah, say, so, as you say, really to be appreciated during summer because that's when the vines are full. Winter, it's a absolutely. bit you can see each other through the... Through the Exactly, and very good for social distancing. Um, <laughs> so um, it is. It is the maze also forms the the beginning part of a of a walk hike that we've got around the farm. Um, what I can say for at the moment, the with all the gardens being indigenous, the the flowers and the and the bird life and the butterflies that they bring, it really is a spectacular time of year. Um, from from that school um, and of course guy as you know um, the area itself lends itself to cycling and hiking um, we mm. are fast becoming a um, very much a, an outdoor capital as it were um, and obviously alongside a, a couple of other attractions like the Elgin railway market and our two book in famous you know, on either side of the valley are two bookend farm stores. Um, our other wine farms, our, our, our neighboring wine farms in the area are also a, a great attraction. Um, and also I need to also, of course, mention that our restaurant also doubles up as an art gallery space. Um, yes. So there's just always something exciting and new that's that's in the space. And, and I'm, I'm very happy to say that our art gallery is certainly gaining a little bit, is gaining traction in the, in the art world and um, certainly very um, ex making art purchases very accessible and easy for, for our guests. And that's one thing I just want to say to anybody that hasn't visited Southall yet. You hear the word art gallery, but don't think pretentious because that's the one nice thing about South Hill is that it's very warm and welcoming to anybody and everyone. And, and there are so many different things to keep you captivated uh, and and even the art itself is is a bit of a surprise in a way so yeah I, I love that about what you've you've managed to put together there you've you've got that adventure you've got that outdoor feel but you've also got that culture where one can can sip wine amongst <laughs> the artworks and and hopefully hear from the winemaker and say what 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 do you think makes this so superb um I've got some quick fire questions to, to wrap because I'm sure you've both got something better to do than talk to me all day. <laughs> and I'm gonna fire them off and whoever chooses to answer, you're welcome to, to, to answer. If you both want to answer the same question, I'm happy with that as well. So I guess the first question would be mostly for Sean, but Sandy, if you also have a feeling for it, you're welcome. Uh, favorite grapes to farm, Sean? Yeah, well, it, it would seem like the, the obvious question, I mean, the obvious answer should really be Pinner, given the, the day, but, um, and it isn't a problem at all. I mean, I love farming the Pinot, but Syrah and, and Cabernet Sauvignon also, um, great. And, and favorite variety to drink? This is definitely for both of you. <laughs> it would be Cabernet yeah. for me. Okay. And I'm a Sauvignon Blanc drinker. Phenomenal. Love Cabernet, this stuff. Cabernet Sauvignon <laughs> and Sauvignon Blanc, eh? Yeah. Don't worry, Pino. I'll look after you. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Four-wheeler four or double cab? Uh, for well, me, God, it's... Farm, it's the... I think... no, sorry, Sean. Yeah, the... I was just going to say, on but the for farm, me, the four -wheeler, definitely. Definitely. Most Definitely. But, so but you're both going on a four-wheeler on the farm? 
Yeah, but the but then the ninety kilometer commute would get a little tiresome on a four wheeler, so I'd have to take a double cab. <laughs> yeah, and how do the dogs fit on a four wheeler, Sandy? Uh, you know those <laughs> little Jack uh, Jack Russell will fit anywhere where it has to. <laughs> Another question for both of you, and uh, we'll. If you if you please, M most memorable wine tasting experience. Well, for me, uh, you know, when I was a, a student, I started working in a restaurant on a wine farm, and that's really where the wine bug kind of bit. I mean, I'd been exposed to wine to some extent through my parents, but I'd never really sort of taken it seriously. And I remember that the very first wine that did something to me was the Clan Constantia Malbrook, nineteen eighty nine. It just, it stood out, it blew me away and, and truly excited me in a way that I didn't realize wine could do. That's awesome. And Sandy? Guy, um, we've been holding back a little bit from, from you and, and your lovely wife, but what we have recently introduced on the farm, and I'm happy to say our, our first um, couple of... Um, instances where we've actually done done this is we've introduced the king's table um which is for people either you know just book the two of you and whoever else is at the table joins you but where we're putting small groups together so it might be that you come with a bunch of mates and, and you all know each other um but where my husband kevin and i will host you and um my Kevin is known to having a few aces up his sleeve and um, obviously he and I do, we do prepare it, but um, he still never fails to surprise me and um, has brought out a, a couple of absolute winners from, from, the, from the cellar. And then I try and do my best with the, with the restaurant kitchen to, to pair the, 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 the meal with, with the wines that, that Kevin's going to share. Um, and yes, I must say, it's, it's, they're, they're great fun and informative and obviously for me, great sense of pride to, to be able to introduce um, our wines and our food and, and all that South Hill has to offer um, through, through the King's Table. Yeah, they've been great. They're great. Yeah. And that obviously all came from your uh, experience with my wife and I that one night. Hey? That stimulated all of this <laughs> because you had such a raving Absolutely. good time with the music turned up. Sorry to the people that were in the manor house. We don't, we don't know if they ever came back. Ah. Uh, yes, great secret, fun. Secret talent. Either of oh, you. Guy, from my, my side, I, you know, I think you know I'm a bit of an open book. I don't know that there's much secret. Um, oh, I think... Party started. I know how to yodel on you. I know how to yodel laddie and oh. I, I know how to tell a good or in probably most of my friends will say bad jokes, but that's everything else is what you see is what you get. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to make you tell a joke, but we're not going to let you get away with telling us you can yodel and we don't know <laughs> what that sounds like. Well, Some people have it, never heard it. <laughs> it, dem it demands um, dance moves as well. So I'll wait for it for your for your and Bron's next visit to, to share it with you. <laughs> John, does she always do this? Just find ways yeah, of ste yeah, sidestepping challenges. Absolutely. Eh? That's the secret <laughs> yeah. challenge. Sidestepping. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear the yodeling. Okay, and Sean, secret talent? Well, I, I hesitate to call it a talent, but I because I don't think I do it particularly well, but not many people know that I, I can play the piano. I did it uh, as a subject at school. So wow. it's, a, it's a secret, but possibly uh, you could argue against it being a talent. <laughs> now, if you put those two talents together, yodeling and piano playing, that yeah. in itself is a wine tasting experience extraordinary. Uh, that would be well, fantastic. thankfully there's no keyboard at hand, so you can't ask me this to play anything. <laughs> Well, I can vouch for a pristine vineyards, which produce top quality, cool climate grapes and wines, accommodation offering luxury farm stay experience, the art gallery, as Sandy mentioned, of 
continually changing local art, uh, a great space for creating unique personalized functions and weddings when we can get back to that. And of course, that restaurant that serves delicious uh, bistro country style meals. South Hill Vineyards really is all about creating cool taste experiences. And if you fancy your luck, then answer the easy question here on the Via the Grapevine Facebook page. And uh, you could win, you could win a one night stay in the pump house for you and your partner, self catering. And that includes a wine tasting of the South Hill range of wines. So a very, very nice price indeed. Uh, thank you, Sandy King and Sean Skiver for your time and energy today. Thank That's you, guys. It's been lovely chatting thank to you. you. And happy Pinot Noir Day. <laughs>